Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. We're going to try something a little different today. Before we get started, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today, another day in your creation that you've created. I pray whoever's listening, that you would open their ears, their eyes, and their hearts and minds and spirit to what you have to say and what you want them to understand. I pray for healing. I pray for whatever they need. I pray that they would have a conviction, and I pray whatever that conviction is, it would draw them closer to you. I thank you for all that you've done and will do, and that you are good and you are eternal and loving. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want you to imagine complete darkness. And in that darkness, I want you to imagine a light. And this light says that I am the source of life. I am life. And it speaks and says, let there be light. Let there be more of me. And it claims that I am good and I am perfect and I am balanced like a sun that explodes in every direction in perfection. Let there be trees, let there be stars, moons, animals, earth, planets, everything that you can see comes from me. And I am all powerful, all knowing, the great I am. Now, he makes us into his image. The fact that we can perceive the world around us means that there is light and there is life and there is good but there's also darkness, which he spoke over. And he says, this darkness is bad. He said, I have separated the darkness from myself. I am not the darkness, I am good. And everything that's a dark is not of me. And it's confusion and it's evil. But I can speak over that and create life. I mean, everything we see, I mean, it's supposed to be good. But what's different about us in creation is he gives us a choice. He says, you can obey me and I can show you who I am and what I'm like and give you life abundantly, and give you peace and love and kindness and so forth. You can enter into heaven and feast at my table. Or you can redefine right and wrong for yourself, but I would have nothing to do with you. So this is where we're at when we look around the world. The greatest commandment is love God and love people, take care of creation. Do we see that? Obviously not. So, with that being said, what do we see? We see darkness. We do see good. But everyone has redefined what good and bad is in their own eyes. The God of the Bible says there's only one thing that's good. There's only one way to look at the entire world. And when we get to spend time in the Bible, we get to understand what he's like. And we get to feel what he's like and to know him more. We were designed actually to get to know who he is, to have a relationship with him and with each other. But darkness is present. Free will is present. Would you want someone to steal from you? 
then why do we steal? Would you want someone to lie to you? Then why lie? Would you want someone to hurt your feelings, gossip about you, cheat on you, you know, fight you? <laughs> then why do those things? He says, those things aren't of me. Those are of the things of the world. He describes it as Satan's children. They listen and obey him. They do what he wants them to do. They are the hands and feet of his kingdom. But my kingdom is of the hands and feet of God. Do you want to belong to my kingdom or do you want to belong to the kingdom of this world? My kingdom is everlasting, eternal, loving, kindness, good, righteousness, justice, peace. But the kingdom of this world is sex, drugs, alcohol, money, vanity. They love themselves more than they love each other. And he says, that's not of me. You and I and everyone else has a choice to which side we're going to serve, the darkness or the light. Redefine right and wrong for ourselves or open the Holy Bible and get to understand the God who created all things, including you and me. And that is what life is about. It's about being able to make a choice. He says, they don't worship me because they love evil more than they love good. Do you love what is evil? Look at the Ten Commandments. What do you worship? What do you honor? Do you lie, steal, cheat, deceive, murder your brothers and sisters with your tongue or physically? Or do you do what God's will is? Put him above everything, take care of your family, tell the truth, even if it hurts you or gets you fired or whatever. When we look at these things, we can see who people really are. We could see the fruit, as Jesus describes, of their life. But he says, I will cut off all evildoers. I will destroy them. I will bring them back to dust from where they came. But those who want to do good, I will take in. I will treasure as my own children. Now, I have a past just like anybody else. He says, if you are evil, you who are evil, come to me and I'll give you a new life. God helps those who want help. But for those who don't think they need him, he says, I have nothing to do with them. Though I still love them, I don't approve of their deeds, which is their actions. Everything they do, do you put yourself above others or do you put others above yourself? Now, here's the hard part about us. Since we came into this world, the Bible describes we're all evil, we're all prideful, we're all self-seeking, we all worship images, we all are just total evil. <laughs> we don't do what's right. We're right in our own eyes. We're prideful. We will never say I'm sorry. Just, just all these things. When we look at the commandments of the Bible, it's basically saying this is what perfection looks like, but none of us will obey it. None of us can obey it. So how do we get saved? Well, thank God in his mercy that he so loved us. He sent his only son to die on a cross to live a perfect life and show us how to do that. But we still can't do it even when we do good or think we're doing good because we don't really mean it. We just want the recognition. See, I did good. See, I'm a good person. And that's not the way this God is. He says, you're still evil no matter what. What? So how do I get saved? Well, when we invite Jesus into our heart, he comes into our heart, this heart of stone, this rock of pride and vanity and just complete darkness, which despises the light. And he says, I will give you a new heart. I will make your heart of stone a heart of flesh. I will write my laws on your heart 
The Old Testament, we couldn't do it. We had to sacrifice animals for, to repent of our sins because God is holy and he's perfect. And we're made in his image, but we've fallen from perfection. We were never supposed to experience death. We were never supposed to experience incompleteness in our life. We were never supposed to feel that we were not loved. And this is what sin does. It separates us from that holiness, from feeling loved, from feeling completeness and whole and accept and to, to feel acceptance. And we, and we substitute it with all the other things. But Jesus says, those things will never satisfy you unless you come to the truth. And the truth is, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to heaven. No one comes to peace. No one comes to love and acceptance and goodness unless you come to the truth. And he says, I am the truth. I am the door. And he says, come to me. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you're living in sin. You can do no right. You're, all your thoughts are evil. But God so loved you anyways, even though you didn't deserve it. He came here, put on a human body, and died for your sins. And he says, come to me. Let me heal you. Let me love you. Let me fix you. I am your creator. But the question is, do you believe that? Do you want that? And he says, if you don't want that, it's because you love darkness. You love pain. You love anger, fighting and lusting and doing these things more than you want what is good. And he says, I am good. I am the provider. You're not your own provider. I am the healer. I am everything that you really want. Are you willing to open up the Bible? Are you willing to go to church? Are you willing to get baptized? Are you willing to finally stop rebelling against God so he can cleanse you of your mistakes and fill you with his love and show you who he is and bring you into his family as his own child? Or do you like the way your life is? Okay, so how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I come into his kingdom? Bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And I believe that you sent your only son to die for my sins. Come into my heart and lead me into the life of everlasting. Now, what that says is not just in that moment that you give your life to Christ. This is an everyday process. You want to go to heaven. You have to follow his Holy Spirit. Oh, but I have to do all this, this, and this, and this, and this, and read the Bible, and this, and this, and this. You're giving me more burdens. Trust me, it may seem like burdens at first, but in the end, they're good. Now, you can't do these things actually by yourself. That's why you need a savior. You need a teacher. You need a mentor. You need someone to hold your hand the whole way through. And this is what Jesus did. He sent his only son to die to give you a gift, a free gift. And he's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, I will be with you no matter where you go. I will lead you. I will hold your hand. Every step you take, I'll take with you. I will be to you a father, and you will be to me my child. Now, you feel that coming through your mind, coming through your heart? That's just a little bit. That's only what you can handle and what you can taste right now. He's allowing you to experience that. Now, with that being said, he's going to give you a new heart. He's going to give you a new identity. But you have to let go of your ways. And this is a slow process. How do I do that? Read your Bible every day. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Pray every day. And eventually, it'll start to happen on its own. You'll start to want to find a church. You'll start to want to do these things. He's giving you new desires. Your old desires were to do Satan's will. 
which is evil and, nas and just corruption. <laughs> you have a bad heart. You need a new heart. He's like, I'm coming into your heart and I'm going to fix it. I'm coming into your mind and I'm going to fix it. So it's not really you who's fixing you because you couldn't do that, right? You still can't do that. You tried. <sighs> Sucked. I tried too. Didn't work, did it? <laughs> he says, I'm going to fix you because I am God and I am your creator. And I can fix what I created, even though it's broken. Just like a car. You don't take your car to a furniture store. No, you take it to the dealership or to a mechanic who can fix it. But God is the creator of you. and He can fix you. See, the trees have an identity, the stars and the moon, animals have an identity, a cat's a cat, a dog's a dog, grass is grass, leaves are leaves, the stars and the moons are their set identity, and you all have an identity in Christ. So if you want to experience complete and wholeness, you have to lay your life down, and you have to surrender. That's what it's about, surrendering, so you can experience who this only one true God is. That was a lot, I know. And there's probably more. Jesus is your Savior. And He wants a relationship with you. But do you want a relationship with Him? It's free will. There's all this psychics and all this astrology and all this stuff. And He's like, those are idols. I created those things. Don't worship my creation. Worship the one who created those things, right? I think there's more. I'm not sure. I know there's always more. Um, oh, so as you walk it out with Christ, you start to want to do what he desires. Those desires, his desires start to become your desires. But apart from him, you will always desire what is bad, according to the Bible. So, what will it be? Surrender to the one true God, or go upon your way and die in your sins. Jesus loves you. He died for you. And I'm going to end on this. God so loved the world. His highest treasured gift was Jesus. The thing that he loved the most. Jesus had everything. When Satan tempted him in the garden, he said, if you're the son of God, why is God allowing you to starve? If you're the son of God, why is God allowing you to be hurt? God wouldn't even allow a paper cut to happen to Jesus. And you look at that cross, what do you see? You can't even tell he's a man according to the scriptures. I know there's a lot of paintings and crucifixion, you know, images, but According to the Bible, you couldn't even tell he was a man. He said, I can count my own bones. Every single one of my bones I could count. And he says, I bought them with a price. I'm buying you with a price of blood that you couldn't pay back yourself. You couldn't fix your mistakes no matter what you did or do. And he says, I'm buying you. God's most treasured possession. Think about it this way. For those of you who are women or men or whatever, a child, think about a baby, brand new baby. This is a perfect, loving, amazing baby. It's so cute. Now I want you to imagine Adolf Hitler or someone that's just, just did so much wrong. They killed him. Now I want you to imagine that's you. You are that murderer. You are that rapist. You are that pedophile. You are the whatever you hate the most. I identify this person, Hitler, whatever. Just cram all that, and there you are. Now this baby is perfect. It's never done anything wrong. That's Jesus. 
It's never sinned, never lied. Perfection lives in the presence of God, God's greatest gift. And he says, I want to trade this for that, for you. I want to trade this perfect baby for you. Oh my gosh, really? God so loved the world that he gave his only perfect son above all creation that he loved to buy you. Wow, wow. And I'm going to end on that. Thank you so much. God bless.